Hey everybody, this is Dr. Andy over at the Wellness Way offices located in Green Bay, Appleton and Waukesha, Wisconsin. And I'm actually the lead clinician in our Waukesha office, which is just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about probably the number one thing that we see in our office consistently, and that is thyroid problems. The reason why thyroid problems are just so massive is 80% of women in this country do have a thyroid condition. That is not our statistics. Look it up. This is actual medical statistics. And so I want to take you through today what's wrong with the thyroid, why so many things go wrong in the first place, and what we do in our offices to help. It's mainly women, men too, but mainly women um, overcome these, these thyroid problems. And so the number one question I get in my office is, you know, Doc, I had my blood test done, my thyroid was tested, and my test came back normal. And yet, I'm still fatigued, I don't feel good, I'm cold all the time, my hair is thinning. Why is that? The biggest reason why this is happening is because doctors are not testing it correctly in the first place. And I know that sounds a little bit arrogant, but really, well, you have to look at the anatomy of the thyroid and then the anatomy of the body, physiologically, what's happening, what's making it go wrong. And so, another question that I get is when I take our patients through the proper testing, what we need to look at, um, they ask me all the time, then, well, why isn't my doctor doing this? And the answer is very simple. If there's not a solution to that problem, they're not going to test it. So if you can read between those lines, if there's no drug for it, they're not going to test it. And I know that sounds crazy, but when you really look at what's happening, it really makes sense, and that's what we're going to take you through. When it comes to diagnosed thyroid conditions, there's basically two solutions, levothyroxine, Synthroid. Those help for a little bit, but the problem is what drug does not have a side effect, and they're not good long-term solutions. And that's the way they treat everything, is one cure for everything. If you have a bad thyroid, this is what they're going to do. If you have high cholesterol, high blood pressure, there's a drug for everything. And you got to look at this totally different. Um, we have to approach this as, is there a problem with the liver, problem with the adrenal glands? Could there be too much vaccine toxicity, heavy metal toxicity? Could there be food allergies? You have to look at each specific person, do some digging, do some testing, find out what's attacking that thyroid in the first place so that you get people on the path to that recovery. When it comes to treating the thyroid, you have to look at other organs in the body and what's happening with our immune system. So here's what the thyroid does. It helps us metabolize, um, helps us lose weight and maintain a healthy weight. Um, so people that don't have a healthy thyroid can have problems with that. It can be cold a lot, have thinning hair, um, just different metabolic conditions. And the nice thing is when you get the thyroid up and working the way that it's supposed to, all of a sudden these women come in and say, oh my gosh, I have a much easier time losing weight now. Um, I feel so much better. I have so much more energy through the day. So when we look at the thyroid, you have to look at all the hormones in the body and how everything is working together. The thyroid and the adrenals are so connected. And in medical testing, they never test one or the other. Um, and so for men, it's so much easier. And this is why we don't get a lot of thyroid problems is we basically have one hormone that we're working with. That's testosterone. And it's either at a good level or if it's not, and if it's not, that's when we have health problems. For women, it's so different because you have so many hormones that you're working with that if one goes off, another spikes up, that declines, another spikes up, and it's just this cascade that's deteriorating and leads to thyroid conditions. This is why women are so much sicker than men today. This is why our offices are literally filled 80, 90% women. Um, it's not that men don't get sick, it's just there's so many different hormone problems that are happening. So let's look at the thyroid gland. It provides us energy. It helps um, work with other hormones that regulate homeostasis in our body, and it metabolizes fat. So basically what it's doing is it's metabolizing with other hormones to give us what we need every single day. So when we look at the thyroid, it's a gland that sits in our neck, it wraps around our esophagus and our air pipe. And so one of the first questions I ask my patients when we suspect a thyroid problem is, do you feel a constant lump in your throat? And most of the time the answer is yes if they have a true thyroid problem because it just makes sense that thyroid swells and puts pressure on those areas. 
So as we're looking at the thyroid gland, I'm actually going to jump away from there and confuse you even more because we're going to jump up to a small little gland in our head called the pituitary. Here's what the pituitary does is it releases a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone that basically goes through and tells our thyroid to produce more hormones. Very simple process. In fact, this is what levothyroxine and synthroid are based on is our TSH levels. Now think about that. Does that really make sense? Is they're given a drug for the thyroid that actually targets a hormone in the pituitary. So a lot of times we've got to ask that question, is really what they're doing making sense in the first place? And here's the other thing, is these drugs were based on 1973 values. We're in 2014 right now, and they're still based on 1973 values. It does not make any sense whatsoever. So now let's jump back down into the thyroid. Okay, so our pituitary gland has thyroid stimulating hormone, which goes to our thyroid to tell it to create more T4 and T3. Now, T4 is an inactive hormone. Our body can't readily use it, but it needs to be converted to T3, which is the active hormone that our body actually uses. And this conversion happens in our body, in our organs, mainly in our liver. So let me ask you this. If you have a thyroid condition or if you're on thyroid medication, has your doctor even looked at where this conversion is taking place or what's making it not happen in the first place. You always got to remember to ask that question. The other thing we got to look at then is reverse T3, which is another hormone created by the body, and it's in place if our thyroid hormone, hormones come up too much. Um, if they do, that puts us in hyperthyroidism, which is another condition that women have to be medicated for. And so you got to look at all these different things. And so a lot of times doctors will only test TSH. Now they're starting to add some T4, sometimes T3, but that's as far as they will ever go. And so I get that question all the time, well, why don't they um, test my reverse T3? And the bottom line is because insurance companies usually don't pay for that. And so if they're in a plan, they will kick that doctor right out of the plan. So who's really has your best interest in working your thyroid? You've got to always ask that question. So medically, when they do this incomplete testing, when they don't even put reverse T3 on a test, they're not going to find out the cause. And ladies, you're going to be on meds the rest of your life. I guarantee it. And so again, if, if somebody's on meds, it might not be the smartest thing to take them off right away, but you've got to find the solution to help weed off of that. And so um, we don't have the right tools. We're working on the completely wrong paradigm if we don't have that, that test. And so really what brings up reverse T3, um, trying to shunt those hormones down, is basically it comes down to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are worn out, and a lot of these women are just completely stressed out. Again, when I talk about stress, it's who stresses more, men or women? Women all the time. And, and again, that's not criticizing. That's how you guys are made. You guys can do 14 things at one time. Men, we can only really focus on one, maybe two things at a time. And so that creates more opportunities for stress. We always say, who, who stresses more? Women. Who causes them more stress? Men. So we always got to look at that. So let's look at those adrenal glands. If you don't test the adrenal glands, it's kind of like having blurred vision, going to a doctor, and him only testing one eye. It doesn't make complete sense. You got to get the whole picture there. And so when we talk about the thyroid hormone, we got to look at the adrenal glands. They are so interconnected. Bottom line, if the adrenal glands get worn out, the thyroid's going to go into hyperdrive, then it's going to start to wear, wear down also. So, ladies, how many of you have actually had your stress hormones tested, your cortisol levels? At the Wellness Way, we never guess. We always test. This is why when we work with the thyroid, we're also testing, always testing the adrenal glands, um, our stress glands seeing what those cortisol levels are. If they're too low, if they're too depleted, it's going to kick up that reverse T3 and cause havoc in our thyroid. Ladies, how many of you have actually had your adrenal glands tested along with your thyroid? When we get patients in our office, it's usually really low. And so what we see all the time is women that are fatigued, no energy through the day, and a lot of them almost catch their second wind at night. And if that's you, I'm telling you, you're going to be sick. And so then we have to ask, if your daily cycle of hormones is out of balance, what is your monthly cycle going to look like? 
And it starts making sense because we get so many women that just don't have a normal monthly cycle. And then you have to look at what's going to happen through menopause. If the adrenal glands are contributing 50% of your hormones through menopause and your adrenal glands are completely depleted, you're going to go through a lot of problems going through menopause. And it's treated like it's a condition, like it's a disease, like a syndrome. And when you have normal adrenal hormones, you're gonna, your menopause is going to be pretty smooth. And you have to ask yourself, how many women are going to go through menopause? Everybody. And lastly, when we're talking about the adrenal glands, you have to look at chronic fatigue syndrome is the second highest diagnosis in this country. And we see this all the time. A lot of times people think it's just a thyroid problem. Well, the adrenal glands go hand in hand. If you don't have abundant cortisol, you're going to be chronically fatigued. The other big thing we see is a lot of infertility problems. Without proper hormones between the adrenal glands and thyroid, you're going to have huge fertility difficulties also. The last thing is when you look at levothyroxine or Synthroid, look at the side effects. And one of the contraindications that they clearly put on the box, on the warning label, is do not use if you have ins insufficient adrenal hormones. Does that make any sense to put somebody on a drug for the thyroid that can come from adrenal insufficiency and they never test that in the first place? Okay, so let's go back to the thyroid now. T3 and T4. Remember, T4 is inactive in our body. It's got to go through other glands, predominantly our liver, to be converted to T3 to be active and used by the body. And so a lot of times I'll see on a test, T4 is normal, but T3 is not normal. It's way below the level it should be. And right away, that means there's a conversion problem happening in the liver. Is our body too toxic? Is our diet too bad? Do we have a heavy metal toxicity? These are different things that we have to look at, mainly getting to the point where we can do a nice, thorough detox in the body, targeting the liver also. Um, and that way, you can get that conversion to start to happen again. When it comes to toxicity, we also have to watch what's happening with iodine. Iodine is the number one mineral that our thyroid needs on a daily basis to produce these hormones. And there's so many chemicals now that are, we're surrounded with. And they're halogens, bromide, um, chloride, fluoride. All these things basically take the place of iodine and steal, steal that conversion. Um, bromide is found in our breads and a lot of our different wheat products. Fluoride in our toothpaste. Chloride in our water supply. And so all of these different things can stop that conversion from happening. So... Looking at the thyroid, we have to look at the whole body, including what the immune system is doing. Autoimmune disease is the number one cause of hypothyroidism across the board. Hashimoto's, Graves' disease. And it's the number one undiagnosed um, process that's happening with that thyroid. And again, you have to go back to the question, why is it so undiagnosed? If there's no drug for it, they will not test it. And so we have to look at different antibodies that could be attacking the thyroid or the thyroid hormones. And that's thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin antibodies. So when we look at thyroid peroxidase, it's an enzyme that's normally found in the body that helps the thyroid produce its thyroid hormones. And what we have to do is we have to look at thyroid peroxidase antibodies that are, is an immune reaction that's happening in the body that basically attacks those thyroid hormone production from ever taking place. And so that's a really, really important test parameter that we have to do with the whole thyroid panel. Lastly, on a thyroid test, we have to look at thyroglobulin antibodies, which again is an inflammatory response happening in the body, an autoimmune condition that can attack the thyroid and the thyroid hormones, leading to underproduction, leading to the whole cascade of problems that women come in our office in the first place. You really have to get to the bottom of that. And so what can cause this autoimmune inflammatory response in the first place? You have to look just basically at diet. 80% um, of our immune system lies in our GI, so if you have a gut problem, you're going to have an inflammatory immune problem, and that can turn into a whole autoimmune attack in the thyroid. We have to look at gluten sensitivities. You have to look at if there's been a long-term infection. Is there any heavy metal toxicity? Is there too much estrogen in the body? Has there been um, birth control for too long? So all these different parameters 
can um, lead to those antibodies attacking that thyroid. So here's the bottom line. At the Wellness Way clinics, we never guess. We always test. We're not going to just start throwing different herbs and supplements at a person expecting their thyroid gland to heal or their adrenal glands to come up um, and start producing the hormones that we need. And so what we do is we start off with simple x-rays, believe it or not, an x-ray of the thyroid um, or of the neck to actually see thyroid inflammation. We can take an x-ray of the middle section to see if there's inflammatory processes going on in the GI. Beyond that, what you want when you're getting your thyroid tested is you definitely want the TSH, which most doctors do, T3 and T4, which a lot of them do, but you'll never see them do this. You need a reverse T3. You need thyroid peroxidase. You need thyroglobulin antibodies. You need your cortisol levels from your adrenal glands. Um, and there's just so many things that can, we can tell in from those test results in helping our patients get better. So we hope we answered some of your questions concerning the thyroid and given you a roadmap to recovery and helping you get back to your normal energy levels and everything else that could be happening. Um, please do not hesitate to ever contact any of our offices if you have any of these conditions.